I actually thought about death quite a lot as a kid. I was very shy and pensive, and that kind of predilection evolved into my starting to volunteer for hospice when I was 17. That was the first time that I got to work directly with people who were dying. I went to divinity school in my late 20s um, to study to be a chaplain. And um, after I had done my initial residency and fellowship after I graduated, I, my husband and I moved to Maine and I started working for a hospice as an interfaith chaplain. Seeing a great number of people in different environments, people dying in their home, people dying in institutions, family members caring for them, big family, small families, all of those kinds of things. Um, I started to notice a lot of patterns and one of those patterns was that once the, the death actually occurred, people would very uh, reflexively default to, you know, calling a funeral director, choosing cremation or burial, um, and that was kind of it. And I felt like there was a disempowerment that happened. And so that led me to become very interested in alternate ways of working with death. Um, as a Buddhist, I was very familiar with people caring for their own deceased at home with the help of the community. And I was wondering what other variations there were of that kind of care in the world. Open air cremation has been around for centuries and centuries in many different cultures. There are a couple pyres in Colorado, one in Northern Colorado, it's a private pyre, and one in Southern Colorado, which is a public pyre that's in Crestone. And something that always spoke to me about open air cremation was that it allowed people to continue to engage after the death has occurred. It's a way of cremating our deceased loved ones in the open air, outside, where their body is laid out and allows people to be very present throughout the process of a person becoming a very different form after they've died. It allows a different kind of deep and acute contemplation of what death is and what it means to let go. Um, so it's always something that spoke to me and it's always something that I ideally would love to have access to when it's my time to die. Living in Maine and starting to think more about these issues of different and more expansive ways of working with and relating to death, I'm always very gratefully aware of how much land there is in this very beautiful rural state and also how independent Mainers are. See, I've always felt that people in Maine value doing things the way that they want to do them. And um, I felt all of these things together made it such a perfect place to potentially build another open air cremation pyre. I started a nonprofit, Good Ground Great Beyond, and in March of 2019, I bought 63 acres of land in a town called Dresden, which is in the mid-coast area of the state. Part of the vision is to allow for a lot of the land to be seen as a kind of scattering ground or place where people can establish memorials for their deceased loved ones, space that they can just walk around and be in nature. I feel that what's happening right now culturally in our conversations around different kinds of death awareness and death care is that there are a lot of people that would just like to have options that speak to them individually in ways that are very resonant and meaningful. So Good Ground Great Beyond is this very natural intersection or inseparability of earth and sky seen and unseen. I know in my own experience of being alive and working with people in the dying process and after death that 
when we become too one-pointed about all things earthbound, there tends to be something that's missing. And when we become too focused on the, the great beyond, we can often become a little crazy and untethered. And that somehow in this very mysterious way, these things need each other that the mystery needs a kind of reference point while we're embodied beings. And this reference point of the earth needs some connection to the mystery and all of the things that we really don't know at all. So for me, the name Good Ground, Great Beyond really encapsulates that inseparable relationship.